This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today my topic is the management of the ulcerative colitis. As we have already discussed in our pathology lectures about the ulcerative colitis and the Crohn's disease in detail. So today we are going to discuss the management of the ulcerative colitis. In the management first of all we have the investigations. What are the investigations we are going to carry out? So one by one. First of all, the first investigation we are going to do is the CBC. CBC means complete blood picture and why we are doing the CBC in order to rule out the anemia. Clear? CBC we are going to do in order to rule out the anemia. The second investigation that we are going to do is the ESR and the CRP. Why? Because they are the inflammatory markers. The ESR and the CRP, they are the inflammatory markers. Then the third thing we all know that ulcerative colitis from our previous lecture that it is P anka positive. It is P anka positive. And we all know that the, in the Crohn's disease it is uh, what anti saccharomyces cerevisiae antibody positive. This is P anka positive, anti neutrophil antibodies positive, and uh, the Crohn's disease there is anti saccharomyces cerevisiae antibody that is positive so this is a differentiating feature of the crohn's and the ulcerative colitis then what we are going to do the fourth investigation that is the stool culture now why we are doing this stool culture this is stool culture is done in order to rule out the infective cause infective cause of the bloody diarrhea because we all know that there are certain infectious agents that can lead to the bloody diarrhea. So in order to rule out those infective causes, we will be also doing the stool culture. Clear? Then the fifth investigation that we are going to do is the plain abdominal x-ray. Now what is the specific finding that is related to the ulcerative colitis in this x-ray? that is basically lead pipe appearance lead pipe appearance now what is this why we are calling it as the lead pipe appearance because what happens that you all know that there are the hostel folds in the large intestine in the colon there are the hostel folds now what happens in the ulcerative colitis these hostel folds they are lost so there is the loss of the hostral folds in the ulcerative colitis so it looks like a simple pipe lead pipe it looks like a lead pipe in the abdominal x-ray clear plain abdominal x-ray so that's why it is called as the lead pipe appearance then the last one investigation that we are going to do is the colonoscopy Colonoscopy is more accurate than the radiological findings clear so this is a very important investigation that is the colonoscopy and this gives the features of the ulcerative colitis that if you are doing the, going to do the colonoscopy so you will uh, you will be able to find that uh, up to the up to which extent the disease has extended like it is if it is limited to the rectum only it is involving the left colon it is involving the transverse means till where the disease is uh, extended so this is known by the colonoscopy and on colonoscopy you will also see the ulcerations may also be there broad base ulcer may also be there bleeding may also be there so these are the colonoscopic findings and if on colonoscopy you will be finding the colonos you will be finding the uh, Crohn's disease features then you will be diagnosing it as a Crohn's disease and if you are finding the ulcerative colitis features then you will be diagnosing it as a ulcerative colitis that the features we have already discussed in our previous lecture so you can if you are not remembering that you can once again watch this that lecture so these are the basically investigations that you are going to carry out uh, to rule out the ulcerative colitis to diagnose the ulcerative colitis now what you are going to do how you will manage or how you will treat the patient how you will treat the patient of the ulcerative colitis so here is the treatment this is very important topic treatment of the ulcerative colitis 
Now, basically, the treatment of ulcerative colitis is uh, divided on the area or the extent to which the disease has extended. Clear? For example, let me explain you. Just give a minute to me. I am explaining you. See, this is simply the colon. Clear? This is the colon. And this is, for example, suppose this is the rectum and here is your anus. And then this is the colon extending. This is the left side and this is the right side. Now this is rectum, this is rectum, this is anus and this is colon, left sided colon, this is transverse colon, this is the right sided colon, ascending, descending and the transverse colon. Now first of all we have the active proctitis active proctitis what does this active proctitis means it means that the ulcerative colitis has only involved the rectum clear so this is called as the proctitis means if the ulcerative colitis it is only involving the rectum that is called as the proctitis now is that clear now how you are going to manage this case how you are going to manage this case basically most of the patient, most of the patient of the active proctitis, they are responding to the mesalazine. What is this? This is basically 5 amino salicyclic acid. You are going to give the mesalazine 5 amino salicyclic acid rectally to the patient. Clear? Remember this also. This is you are giving, going to give the rectally mesalazine is given rectally that is basically 5 amino salicyclic acid that is given rectally in these patient in the active proctitis patient and most of most of the patient mostly they respond to this therapy clear if they are not responding you can also try oral mesalazine and still you can also add steroids in this case steroids are also given rectally in this case means this is a very mild case means only involving the rectum there is no involvement of the colon so in this case the patient is managed by the 5 amino salicyclic acid that is the mesalazine that is firstly given rectally if the patient is not responding then you can also start orally and if the patient is still not responding or uh, you can also add the steroids rectally in this case clear this is the active proctitis now the second case is the left sided proctocolitis clear i am writing here treatment that is the second is the left sided proctocolitis now you can see here is its name is indicating proctocolitis proctocolitis means that this proctum this rectum is involved then this colon is also involved so this is the whole area that is involved and now it has become the proctocolitis clear this is the uh, proctocolitis means the ulcerative colitis it is involving the rectum as well as it is involving the colon now in this case we have divided it into mild to moderate and moderate to severe case now what is this mild moderate and severe basically in the ulcerative colitis this mild moderate and severe is uh, we have classified this on the basis of the number of the bloody stools clear i am writing it here that mild ulcerative colitis moderate ulcerative colitis this is basically divided on the on the number of the bloody stools moderate and the severe and the last one is also the fulminant now mild ulcerative colitis uh, the value of the exact uh, bloody stools it is uh, means variable in certain uh, you can say in books so ju just i have uh, i have found that it's less than four bloody stools so it is if the a ulcerative colitis having the less than four bloody stools it is called as the mild moderate is four to six bloody stools and severe is 
greater than six bloody stools. And then what is fulminant? Basically, fulminant is that greater than six bloody stools plus the systemic signs, plus systemic signs that is called as the fulminant. This is very severe case and this have to be managed urgently in the hospital. You have to admit the patient in the hospital. I will tell you that how you are going to manage this fulminant case. But first of all, we are going to discuss this mild, moderate and the severe. So here, first of all, we have the mild to moderate case. How these patients are managed? These patients basically they are managed by an approach that is called as the top and tail approach. What is tall, uh, top and the tail approach? Okay, I am removing it. So, what is this top and the tail approach? Basically, in this uh, in this case, you are going to give the patient five amino salicylic acid that is mesalazine orally plus rectally. Clear? Now what is difference between top and tail approach and this approach? Here you are giving just rectally and if the patient is not responding rectally then you are shifting to the orally. But here what is the tall and tail approach that is used in the left sided proctocolitis that first of all you are giving the patient orally as well as rectally. Both are given together orally as well as rectally 5 monosalicyclic acid same mesalazine is there but the difference is that you are giving orally plus rectally and here you are giving first you are uh, giving the patients uh, rectally and most of the patients they respond rectally not responding then you will shift to the oral but here both you are giving simultaneously. So this is the tall, uh, top and the tail approach in the mild to moderate cases. Then after that we have the moderate to severe cases and here you can also obviously give the steroids to the patient rectally clear then we have the moderate to the severe cases moderate to severe cases means that the patient is passing six or more than six stools four or more than six stools uh, bloody stools per day so this is now the severe cases in this case what you are going to do you will add simply you will give orally 5 amino salicyclic acid as the case become more severe you will shift the drugs to oral simple is that Sim this is the rule simple oral 5 amino salicyclic acid and oral steroid clear this is the moderate to severe case but now the third case that is the fulminant case Clear? Now we are going to discuss the fulminant case. What is fulminant case? Fulminant case. Fulminant case or you can it is, it is said acute severe ulcerative colitis. Now what is this fulminant uh, acute severe ulcerative colitis? Basically we call it as fulminant case when the ulcerative colitis it is not responding to the maximal oral therapy when the ulcerative colitis it is not responding to the maximal oral therapy means you have given maximum amount of the amino salicylic acid you have given maximum amount of the oral steroids but still the patient is not responding now you will call it as the fulminant case this is one thing second thing is that if this patient is meeting a criteria that is called as the true love wits criteria true love wits criteria if a patient is means you can say uh, matching this criteria true love wits criteria then it is also called as the fulminant case now what is this true love wits criteria okay i'm telling you true love wits criteria is basically it's simple greater than six stools uh, sorry stools not bloody stools this is very important greater than six bloody stools per 24 hours per day simply plus plus any one of the following clear plus any one of the following now what are the following remember four things any one of them anemia if the patient is having anemia if he is having fever if he is having tachycardia and if he is having the inflammatory markers raise inflammatory 
markers so these are the four things any one of them plus six greater than six bloody stools per 24 hours then it is it means that the patient has met the true love wits criteria of the ulcerative colitis and now he is called as a fulminant case and now you will be treating that patient as a fulminant case now how you will treat this fulminant case simply first thing you have to do that you have to admit the patient this is treated in the hospital admit the patient to the hospital first thing then the second thing you are going to give the IV fluid to the patient clear IV fluids you are going to give then you will be giving the blood transfusion transfusion when when there the hemoglobin level is less than 10 gram per dl clear when the hemoglobin level is less than 10 gram per dl then you will be giving the blood transfusion to that patient then number third this is first step second third then you will be giving the iv steroids to the patient because you know, all know that in the severe cases always we prefer the IV route here you have given oral route here you have given rectally but now this is severe case so here you will be giving the IV steroids then you will be also giving subcutaneous heparin this is basically what prophylaxis of the venous thromboembolism clear this is subcutaneous heparin you will be giving now you can also give IV antibiotics but when IV antibiotics are given when there is infection in that patient clear when there is a proven infection so you will be giving the IV antibiotics otherwise there is no need of the antibiotics if there is a proven infection in that patient you will be giving the IV antibiotics also so basically this is the how you are going to treat the fulminant case patient that how what is fulminant that who is not responding to the maximum maximum oral therapy and who is meeting to the two loves with wits criteria of this who is meeting the this criteria and how you are going to manage this case fulminant case admit the patient start the iv fluids you have to give the transfusion uh, if the hemoglobin level is less than 10 gram, gram per dl you are giving the iv steroid that is a methyl prednisolone 60 milligram you will be giving these iv steroids then you will be giving subcutaneous heparin as a prophylaxis of venous thromboembolism and iv antibiotics if the patient is infection proven clear if the infection is proving in that patient so this is the fulminant case now now is still the patient is not responding to the therapy all the medical therapy fails now you will be doing the surgery so i will as this is a medicine lecture so we, i will tell you that the what are indications of surgery but what surgery we are going to do that we will be studying in the surgical lectures so basically indications for surgery okay i am writing it here indications for surgery see if the if medical therapy fails if medical therapy fails clear if the patient develops the complication like toxic megacolon like hemorrhage like perforation if the patient has developed so if these are the indications that those patients not responding to the medical therapy for the three days those patients developing the uh, means uh, complications like the toxic megacolon hemorrhage perforation then you are going to do the surgical procedures now one last thing that is remaining is the maintenance of remission now maintenance of remission means that uh, how you are going gonna maintain that remission state of the patient how you will prevent from recurrence of the ulcerative colitis okay i am writing it here so man this is a very small topic maintenance of remission so maintenance of remission is basically which drug is used in the maintenance of remission and maintenance of remission the drug it is basically given in all the cases except in the active proctitis because this is a very mild case that's why we are not giving that uh, maintenance of the remission so here in all the other cases the maintenance is given first of all what is the drug of drug that is given that is the five simple amino salicyclic acid mesalazine this is the first drug that you are going to give for the maintenance 
of the remission if the patient is not responding to this or the relapse has occurred if the recurrence or relapse has occurred then you will be giving thiopurine to the patient like the as a thiopurine this is basically the maintenance of remission so this was all about that how you are going to manage the ulcerative colitis and uh, uh, how we have already discussed on the basis of the severity that it is active proctitis, how you will manage it, if it is left sided proctocolitis, how you are going to manage it, if it is fulminant case, how you are going to manage it and before management we have discussed that what are the um, investigations that you will be carrying out to diagnose the ulcerative colitis. So this was all about the management, if you have any query, any confusion you can ask in the comment section. Thank you so much, Allah Hafiz.